Let's keep you all up to date with what's going on around the Rocket League esports world. And the first, uh, the first thing here, I think caught a lot of people by surprise, but then with a little bit more clarification, uh, you know, everybody kind of settled down. So Joriez was announced by Chiefs Esports to be playing with them at the Esports World Cup. And that's it. Joriez is not moving to OCE. He is not joining Chiefs for RLCS, but he is standing in for Finn, who is retiring and so he will be competing alongside uh, who's a hunter and sure. Uh, uh, banana heads? Is it not? No, not no, chiefs. Wait. Um, no, no, you're right. It's stupid. Um, we'll uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out in a second. But he is, as I said, he's joining the uh, the Chiefs esports. It's only Kaka. there. It Kaka. Is. Okay, so um, Joriez will be yeah. jumping in with those guys for. Esports World Cup. By the way, while we're talking about it, this Esports World Cup, which is rebranded Gamers 8, is not, to my disappointment, is not crew battle. It is only 3v3. Yeah. Yeah, well, which is, it's... Uh, it was well, obviously fine. Cool, they, I guess, they can make whatever format they formats. want. But yeah. I, am, I am sad because I really enjoyed crew battle. I can only imagine they changed it to try to gain a little bit more legitimacy. Um, sure, sure. Because in the end, that's otherwise it would be classified as show matches. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Well, I will tell you. I did a crew battle show match this weekend. A little self plug. If y'all want to see some fun content like that, follow Twitch.tv forward slash Hootie Who. Three O's oh. by the way at the end. Don't forget it. We did a crew battle between Denmark and France. We grabbed some players from those countries. Let them duke it out. That was a lot of fun. I just love crew battle. I think it's super fun. It's interesting because it introduces something new where the players have some sort of choice. And I know it's not a ton of choice, but seeing them choose twos or ones or, you know, it goes back and forth and they decide what to what game mode to play next is always so interesting to me. So uh, I thought it brought something fun and unique to Rocket League, and I hope to see um, at least some show matches and some smaller tournaments, maybe community-organized stuff. Because I thought, yeah. I, I've always very much enjoyed crew battles. Yeah, whatever you do with it. I think the, um, what were they called during the World Championship two years ago when they did the 1v1s in the middle of, like, nights? What did what they right. call? It was like East versus West 1v1s. They they took some very good 1v1 matchups yep. uh, from mostly players who had already been knocked out of the tournament. Uh, so they could just focus on that. And they brought that in as a show match for the World Championships. And that was great. I want to see that again. Uh, and I still want to see like retired players come back for a show match yeah. during imagine, uh, Championship Sunday. Imagine you could like bring back Season 6 players and oh, just yeah. run, like, have them run it back. Season 6 World Championship. That'd be I so mean, there's fun. some coaches walking yeah, around at the here. RLCS Worlds that you know you can just bring into to a match. And you, you saw with memory, some of them... Are the Some of players. them are still ballers, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh, that's funny. I mean, I can't imagine that Violent Panda would drop a couple of stinkers. Uh, <laughs> but that's yeah, funny. I mean, th th that would be really fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what... But you about Chiefs and mm -hmm. Joris Robben getting on an Oceanic team that was the biggest shock to yeah. everyone before yeah. everyone understood what the actual implications were, which is not that much. Uh, but that would have been that would have been a move, wouldn't it? That would have Getting... rocked, rocked Rocket League esports a little bit. Yeah, that that would have been insane because the first, actually, the first interregional move that we saw in Rocket League esports history was an Australian player. Drippe moving hey. to NA. Do you remember what the team was? Evil Geniuses. There you go. He played um, with Classics and was it Gabe? Corrupt. Yeah, Corrupt G. Yeah. yeah, it was. And um, unfortunately, it went terribly. If you go to shift .gg, there's a whole article about this <laughs> from like last week, two weeks ago, Yeah, which goes into the ramifications of it, the, the 
story at the time and everything that came afterwards because it opened the door for yeah, uh, for regional like interregional moves mm -hmm. uh, and we saw obviously Turbo Pulsa from yeah. EU moving to NA and winning the championship for Garage E so it it all started from a move from OCE and now having Jorius I mean not really but imagine Imagine if Jorius moved to OC, that would change things up. But yeah. Absolutely would. That's another that reason awesome. that I'm bummed because Jorius is moving over and it would have been fun to see him in crew battle format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Well, we, got a, we got some more stuff to uh, update you on. We got Unbroken and Davi. I'm probably mispronouncing both their names, but they leave Gamer Legion, Alpi, and the coach Lit will stay on the roster. So it looks like one of the um, one of the teams in Sam that was fairly competitive is already making some big moves, um, releasing or allowing two of them to leave, uh, retaining one piece in Alpi, and, and they will, uh, of course, begin to rebuild for the next season. But we're already beginning to see the shuffle unfold. Of course, last week we talked about Nupo signing with, um, with Twisted Minds. He'll be playing with them moving forward post-Worlds. Uh, so the shuffle begins, folks. We've got a uh, an extended offseason as well. Of course, most of the shuffling will probably occur after Worlds, but um, you know some of the squads are they're, they've already started. So yeah, uh, Gamer Legion was ninth in the South American RSS season of 2024. So they're not a team at the very top or close to the top that is probably, like you said, going to wait sure. until world after worlds because then you have more room for roster changes right yeah, when you yeah, actually have players. top teams yep. that might want to make a change as well and uh, so then that's when it's actually all going to start going crazy with the, the top teams but a team in ninth you know i i can see yeah. that they've got a, a really extended off season now uh, they're dropping two players with a graphic on twitter that had too much AI uh, filters on top oh, of it. And I'm not sure what's happening there, but I don't know. It doesn't look good to, to my eyes. That's funny. But you have in Europe, Sodad blowing up. Yeah. His Fox, Riz Fox, Riz as, Fox. He is, as he is known by now, <laughs> leaves Sodad. Yep. And Matsar and Sizen are looking for a new third. That's the situation right now. They are still going to be competing in the Shift Summer League, even though they've lost one of their players because they have added a sub, a substitute who they will be playing with. Mm -hmm. um, have they announced that already? Is that public? I don't know. I have don't they not? Know. Well, then here's your leak. Eugen. Whoa! More leaks! Eugen. Eugen will be playing with the Sodar. Did you hear me saying yeah. that? Like really leaning into my hillbilly accent. <laughs> I was calling him Saw Dad. Saw Dad. Saw Dad. <laughs> Eugene is going to be joining Saw Dad. Well, with... I don't know what you saw, Dad. <laughs> but uh, I saw a team that I don't think that's, that's a bad move for them. <laughs> Eugene, great player. Oh, yeah. Great next up talent. Mm hmm. And. Uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be joining the ranks there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that is that's a full French yeah, full French now. Yeah, that is a full French team of but with Riz Fox, I mean basically French, He's, right? He was Belgian, right? Yeah, but French speaking Belgian. Sure. So but now now they've unlocked it's, the full it's like power. Otto. Yeah, okay, okay. They've unlocked the full power now. Yeah, but I would say the the French power also comes through in the francophone Belgians like Atta. It does. You're right. It does. Absolutely. It um, seems like all you need to do is know the language. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what gets those people into that community. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 really, it's really not that far apart. Of course, there's they're bordering countries, Belgium mm -hmm. and France. But... I, I live in Belgium, but in the Dutch speaking part, but I kind of know how it goes in the French speaking part where they just look at France as their big brother. Okay. Right? So yeah. even, even with politics, even when at the very start of the 
uh, COVID epidemic, you saw that whenever France implemented new measures, the uh -huh. French speaking politicians in Belgium were immediately like, hey, shouldn't we do that too? And the music, you know, every the culture of the French speaking part of Belgium looks towards France so much because obviously it's a much big, bigger country. Um, of course, there's artists uh, from Brussels, which is also mostly French speaking, like Somai, who do really well in, in that area. So it can go the other way, but usually I'm going to a concert in uh, Ronquière, which is south of Brussels in the French speaking part and like 90 or even 100%, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think 90% of the artists are, are French. Mm. So it, it kind of goes to show that if you live in that part of Belgium, you are basically French. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So it's the same for RIS folks. But now with Eugene, it's a full uh, French roster. And the, he's just their substitute for Shift Summer League, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if that will be like a tryout. I mean, it kind of is, obviously. Sure, sure. Automatically. But if that is a player who uh, Matsuri and Saison want to try out uh, in the off-season that they're basically playing in, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I'm sure they are, are taking it a day at a time. I think a lot of these teams, especially the ones that were fighting in and out of main events, fighting in and out of regionals, you know, the, the way that um, the way that these off seasons work is like it trickles down, right? Your top teams make changes, and then those players become available and trickle a little further down and kick yep. out those players, and so on and so forth. Um, and so your players that are down here, you know, bumping into regionals, missing one, bumping in, they've got to wait for all this stuff to unfold. And then they can find out, maybe they can plug in, like talk, right? AJ no longer with M80, Mist no longer with NRG. Talk gets a chance at a pull-up. So, yeah. um, you know, a lot of these players like Eugen, Sizen, Matzer, Riz Fox, you know, all, all these different guys that have a, a huge upside, but maybe just haven't had a chance yet, or maybe had a chance. And, and you know, like Sizen, unfortunately, this the, the Messiah moved in and, and took his spot. So. Um, I think these these guys, of course, they're trying out. Of course, they're they're seeing what works, but they're also going to be playing a patient to see what unfolds this yeah. offseason. I mean, they have enough time. They got lots of time.